They said never go near the tombs. When we were kids, hey guys, this is Dragmith, and welcome to my post-mortem for Sentinel Descendants in Time. Uh, standard disclaimer, this is not a spoiler-free review. I'm assuming you've just watched through the Let's Play and are well aware of all the content this game has to offer. So, let's just jump right in here, and remember, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I always enjoy hearing what you have to say. There was no real treasure. What is that? Some kind of beastly music or something. Just kind of. The music in this game is really great. It has catchy beats and fits the atmosphere extremely well throughout all the different worlds. My only complaint is that there isn't nearly enough of it. Most of the game goes musicless. Now, this may be to allow the sound effects to be heard more easily, which, considering the number of sound-based puzzles there is, is a really good thing, but I still would have liked to have heard some more. Yellow. And that- oh god! Speaking of sound effects, while I don't have anything exceptional to say about them, I also don't have anything negative to say. All the sound effects fit their locations and were leveled really nicely so you never had a hard time hearing them. I do have a bit of an issue with the sound effect based puzzles, but I'll talk more about that when we get to gameplay. We need to put in the combination of the machine that is across from it. I'm always here, Benny. I don't mean to be so ignorant. There's so much I don't know. And why is that? Work it out, Benny. You look to be a young man, but how old are you? The voice acting was generally pretty good. The characters definitely felt like they were talking rather than reading a script, and the interactions between Benny and Dormus were really great. Doba and Carrie could have used a little work, but considering they're only in the game for a total of maybe 30 seconds, that's a super minor complaint. I give the audio an 8 out of 10. For most of the humans who have ever lived, under a hundred. Doba, I've told you, these aren't ordinary tombs. They're Tastan tombs. And this is one of the most dangerous. The story starts off very strong. You play as Benny, an amateur tomb explorer. Your sister Carrie has been taken hostage by this guy Doba, who wants you to go into the most dangerous tomb known to man and collect anything of value for him. He promises to let Carrie go once you've gone in, but you won't know whether he stays true to his word unless you manage to get back out again. Once inside the tomb, you meet Dormus, an ancient defense program with the appearance and personality of the person who rests there. She reappears as you travel through the various realms that held importance to her, and tries to get you to consider why these tombs are here, who inhabits them, and why there are only 85 of them. This is an awesome story that starts with a strong conflict and evolves into a massive mind game. What you thought were simply tombs are actually traps, intended to punish those that received the gift of long life for not remembering their ancestors who carried out the genetic experiments necessary to make that possible. Where it falls apart a little bit is at the end. We learn early on that only one treasure hunter, by the name of Ramirez, ever survived Tomb 35, and that he is the reason Doba knew it was possible for you to get back out. In the last moments of the game, however, there's a strange twist in that we learn that Benny is Ramirez. Dormus had modified his memories, because even though he had successfully passed her tests already, she wanted to retest him just to make sure his intentions were true. As Benny slash Ramirez goes to leave the tomb, we learn that Carrie is actually his daughter, and that Doba is a friend. It's a massive twist that was not even remotely hinted at throughout the duration of the game. Or, at least I didn't pick up on it. Maybe it's just how the twist was presented, but I don't really like this ending. It almost feels like they had two different potential storylines and couldn't decide which one to use. They took the beginning of one, the end of the other, and just kind of forced them together. I give the story a 7 out of 10. And that's why you'll do your best to get back out again.
Can it ever be, really? It's time everyone knew. We're made to know. For a game released in 2004, Sentinel has strangely impressive graphics. As an adventure game, it's expected to look good. However, it isn't pre-rendered like most other adventure games of the time. The full 3D environments allow you to really get immersed in the world at a level pre-rendered graphics rarely did. Of particular note are the character models, which, while somewhat primitive by today's standards, stand up very well both in texturing and animation. The one complaint I do have, and this is almost more of a gameplay issue than a graphical one, is that the levels are somewhat sparse. While they're beautiful to look at, there are many spots that have huge open areas with nothing in them, or large stretches of wall with just a single repeating texture on it. Breaking up those instances with other things to mess with or look at would have gone a long way towards making the worlds feel more real and lived in. Well, I give the graphics an 8 out of 10. Okay. The controls are fairly typical of any modern first-person game. Mouse to look around, left click to interact, WASD to move. Of interesting note is that Detalion set it up so that you could play with either the keyboard or the mouse. Right click on the mouse will move you forward, and the arrow keys will turn the camera without moving you. Now I don't know what the interact button is on the keyboard, probably control is my guess. But it's nice that they really allow you to play using whatever peripheral you want, even if it's a little non-standard. At no point did I feel like I was fighting the controls or that I couldn't get my character to act the way I wanted them to. For this reason, I'm going to give the controls a perfect score of 10 out of 10. I do have one note here, though. I don't really understand why the spacebar does anything. Make out that one. Hexagon. Jump your stumpy little legs. At no point in the game is jumping ever required. And due to the super small jump height, it also never helps you in any way. There are no walls or ledges you can jump over or down, and it doesn't really help you see over things. Perhaps at one point there were jumping puzzles in the game that got removed, I don't know. This certainly isn't something to take points off for, but it was kind of strange that it existed at all. I can use that to look over there. So we can move this to these lighter markers. As someone who really enjoys adventure games, I would say that the gameplay in this one is pretty solid. For the most part, you can solve each puzzle by experimenting with the devices you can interact with and observing what happens when you mess with them. There really aren't any puzzles that I would consider illogical or that have the solution hidden away such that it's more tedious than it should be. You can solve every puzzle just by thinking through it. With that said, there is an abundance of sound-based puzzles. Now, sound-based puzzles are always a little sketchy, and they're not really done that often anymore because it can be too difficult, or even impossible for someone who is hearing impaired to complete it. The ones in this game are a little hit or miss. The sound puzzles in Sandslard I think were fine. The individual sound effects were easy to hear and easy to distinguish from one another. The way the speakers were scattered around the level turned it into more of a scavenger hunt than a puzzle, but it wasn't too bad. The horn puzzle in Maru was a bit less solid. Some of the horn sounds were very similar, and with the sounding stations being so far apart, it was a little difficult to tell which sound corresponded to which color, because sometimes I wasn't quite sure if I had heard a particular horn before or not. Still, Actually, this one wasn't too nice, bad. So the real outlier here is the realm of Arganus. Every puzzle in that world was tied to sound effects, but in many yeah, cases the sounds far. were difficult to distinguish or just plain not noticeable. Of particular note was the footstep puzzle. Okay, I actually had to look up the solution because until I actually stopped and tried to tell the footsteps apart, I wasn't even able to tell they were different. It occurred to me after I read what the solution was that there were actually no footstep sounds anywhere else in the game. In fact, I got startled when I first heard them for exactly that reason, but I didn't put two and two together at the time. This world, I think, was particularly poorly done. It basically gives you the exact same puzzle nine times, which would be fine if the puzzle got harder or more involved, 
Instead, all it did was change the sound effect and add a couple extra values to the end of the combination. Considering the location and everything that we've learned about Dormoose and her backstory, I feel like Organis was really a wasted opportunity. I give the gameplay an 8 out of 10. Keep Pappas back here. Yes. So, we end this one with a final score of 8.2 out of 10. This is a great game that I strongly recommend you pick up if you enjoy playing first-person adventure games. It's a little heavy on the sound-based puzzles, which is somewhat unfortunate, but otherwise I would say it's probably my second favorite first-person adventure, topped only by Myst 3. So, I want to thank you all for watching. Your views, comments, likes, and subscribes are all greatly appreciated. To stay up to date, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Facebook, the links should be in the description box for this video, on my channel page, and on the screen right now. As for what's coming up next, I'm not entirely sure. With THQ no longer existing, I have to wait to see who gets control of Darksiders before I can request permission for that. And on top of that, I'm graduating from college in a couple weeks, and have quite a bit of schoolwork to do. I'm probably going to take a bit of a break until things settle down from that. So, again, I want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Of course. Like what? I'm not sure yet.